Hello everyone, I'm Kim and Aline, and today is Tuesday, October 3rd. You are now watching Open, a program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to you. Don't forget to stay connected with us via social media at BronxNetTV. When preparing for a new baby, purchasing a car seat is just as important as finding the right stroller or crib. With a mission to help parents make the right choice for their infant, Consumer Reports launched the Car Finder tool and other initiatives aimed towards recommending baby-safe products. Dr. Emily Thomas, the manager of Auto Safety for Consumer Reports, joins me to discuss. Doctor, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Now, I really want to jump into talking about the baby um, new baby initiative from Consumer Reports. Can you just explain what was the reasoning or the inspiration behind this initiative? We understand that there are so many decisions for parents to make, and it can be really overwhelming. Um, Consumer Reports has been testing baby products for over 80 years, and so we are your trusted resource in being able to give you scientifically rigorous, independent ratings and recommendations can help you make the best choices for your family. Now, what is the free infant car seat finder? We've created this great new tool. It's our infant car seat finder. It's free to use. And ultimately what it does is it takes into consideration your lifestyle, your budget, the type of car that you have, or perhaps don't have. And then it narrows down all of our infant car seat ratings into the choices that are best suited for your needs. And it provides you with those results. So it really helps parents in making this important decision and important first purchase for their child. Now, you, you kind of touched on something that I thought was really interesting. And you said um, the car that you don't have. Why may this still be, you know, uh, something that parents who don't have cars or who rely on like uh, the train to get around? Why is this something that they may also want to look into? All babies need to be brought home from the hospital with a appropriate car seat. So you're still going to need one when you bring the baby home. You also want to make sure that you have one for you're using ride share or your car with another family. Just because a car is not your primary mode of transportation doesn't mean that you won't ever need a car seat to transport your child. It's really important to make sure that whenever they're in a vehicle, that they are properly restrained because this is what gives them the best protection in the event of a crash. Now, how will this tool, you know, I was going to say help new parents, but how could this also help parents who are not new to this experience? Car seat technology is always changing. There's new features out on the market. And so really, it can be hard to know just based off of the manufacturer's marketing which is actually better and how does one seat differ from another. Our ratings are incorporated into the finder tool. And so really you get the benefit of all of our testing and evaluations as experts in our field to help you in making this decision. Now, what factors should parents consider when buying an infant car seat? And you talked about uh, like when you do the tests or certain things. So what are some of the things that you're looking for as well to make sure that these are like really good car seats for parents? We evaluate car seats in three main areas. So we look at ease of use, how easy is it to make the necessary adjustments and how to um, really use all the different components of the car seat itself. We also look for potential areas of misuse, how are the labels, how are the instructions that come in the owner's manual, equipping the parents to use the product properly. We also look at what we call fit to vehicle, which is essentially how easy is it to get a secure installation in your car using either the vehicle or anchors or using the vehicle seat belts? And then last but certainly not least, we look at crash protection. All car seats that are sold in the U.S., they have to meet the minimum federal safety standard. However, our testing goes beyond the federal standard. We use a higher energy test and we use an environment that is more representative of a real vehicle today. And this allows us for tests for additional margins of safety that the car seat might be able to provide in the event of a crash. So when we put all of that together, it really helps parents to know as a whole, how does this one car seat compare to its peer that you're going to see there on the shelf? And with so many different types of car seats, especially when you think about price, um, maybe 
parents may be familiar with a certain brand, you know, how could they know what is right for their needs and also what is, you know, safe for the baby? The safest car seat is always going to be the one that fits your car and fits your child. You can use properly every single time. Sometimes parents think that an expensive car seat is going to be the safest option, and that's not necessarily true. In our testing, we've found that there are more inexpensive seats that perform really well for crash or do well in our fit to vehicle testing, perhaps even ease of use. A more expensive seat might give you additional features that could aid in making ventilation easier or make it easier to use, but it doesn't guarantee a safer seat. And really, that's the kind of thing that our ratings help to boil down for you. It's helping you kind of look past the noise of price and brand and marketing and determine what about the seat actually makes it better than its peers. Now, how does this process change uh, when your infant is no longer an infant and then they grow into a toddler? Um, and even in some cases, I understand that children, like even seven-year-olds, uh, can still use a car seat. So how does this process change as the child gets older? You're going to always want to take into consideration your child's age, their height, their weight, when you choose the right car seat for them. We recommend, based off of our own crash testing, that babies move from an infant car seat to a rear-facing convertible no later than their first birthday. And really what that allows is for them to continue to stay rear-facing, which is safest for them, but it also gives them added head protection. And whenever you're looking to make a transition, you don't want to transition your child too early, whether that's from rear-facing to forward-facing or harness to booster. You want to make sure that they have maxed out that uh, phases height or weight limits. So you want to use your rear-facing car seats up to the height or weight limit of the seat. You want to use their forward-facing harness up to the forward-facing height or weight limit of the seat, moving them to a booster where they're relying on the vehicle seatbelt. And yes, for most kids, they're not going to transition out of their booster until they're between the ages of 8 to 12 and approximately around 10 years old, really. And that's because you want to make sure that the vehicle seat belts are fitting the child properly. And that means that the shoulder belt is going across their collarbone and across their chest. The lap belt is going across their hip bones, really hitting the strong, bony parts of their body. This also is uh, dependent on their developmental readiness, their ability to sit through an entire car ride with their seatbelt on properly, not slouching, not moving the shoulder belt behind their back or under their arm. And so you, you have to really kind of gauge how well the seatbelt fits your child without the booster and whether or not they're really mature enough to be able to do this for every trip. Now, that kind of leads into my next question. You know, what are some common mistakes you see when parents are installing a new car seat? And then now what we just discussed about, you know, I had no idea, like you had to think about all those uh, different parts of your body when, you know, using a seatbelt, you know, what are some common mistakes that parents make and then what can we do to avoid them? Car seats are not always intuitive to use and so there are a few common areas that we find misuse. Um, so typically looking at how the car seat is installed to the vehicle, you want to make sure that you have a nice, tight, secure installation which means that once you have used the lower anchor strap or you use the vehicle seatbelt to attach your car seat to the vehicle, you want to make sure that you have removed as much slack from the system as possible and you've gotten nice and tight so that when you go to grab that car seat at the belt path, you can't move it more than one inch high or front to back. And when you're, you're doing installation, always make sure that you are locking the vehicle seatbelt. So you do that by pulling the seatbelt all the way out of the retractor until you hear it click and then it starts to ratchet in as it pulls in the additional slack from the system. You also want to make sure that you're using the correct belt path. So for older kids that are using car seats that can be used in more than one configuration, like forward facing and rear facing, always make sure you're using the correct belt path for the orientation of the seats. When you are um, using rear-facing car seats for children, you want to make sure that it's always installed with a proper recline. 
This is especially important for young babies because if the seat is too upright, what happens is that their heads fall forward and then they obstruct their own breathing. So you want to make sure that the recline is set properly for every ride. Over time, your car seat insulation can loosen. So also make sure that you are checking the install to make sure that it's still nice and secure. The other main area that we see misuse is in how the child is secured within the car seat itself. So we're talking about making sure that the harness is at the appropriate height for your child. So if your child is rear facing, where the harness straps go over their shoulder into the car seat shell, you want to make sure that it's at or slightly below their shoulders if they're rear facing. If they're forward facing, it should be at or slightly above their shoulders. And you want to also make sure that the harness is tight enough for every single trip that if you go to pinch the harness webbing between your fingers at their shoulders, you're not able to get any webbing between your fingers. And lastly, make sure that chest clip is buckled up for every single ride and that it's up at armpit level, and this helps to keep the harness straps positioned over their shoulders. One additional thing for all forward-facing installations it is strongly recommended to always attach the top tether. This is a tether strap that goes over your vehicle seat back and attaches to a tether anchor. This really helps to reduce the forward motion of the car seat during a crash. And that combined with you know, making sure you have a nice tight installation helps to make sure that the car seat is really getting integrated to the vehicle. And so that in the event of a crash, it's not your child's not just benefiting from the crash protection design of their car seat itself, but also all the crash management systems of the vehicle as well. So thank you so much for sharing that information. Is there are there like tutorials uh, with the tool that they can like learn a little bit more about that? Absolutely. So if you go to our website, consumerreports.org forward slash babies, you'll find tons of great ratings and advice for all of our baby products. You'll also find access to our free car seat ratings, not just for the infants, but across all of our categories. You'll be able to access the free infant car seat finder. And we have tons of free education and content with lots of visuals that help you know how to avoid common insulation mistakes, how to properly harness your child, tons of great advice and lots of resources for families. All right, well, doctor, thank you so much for joining me and having this really informative conversation. Thank you so much for having me. Don't go away. We'll be back with more open right after this.